channel. I'm Veronica, a former public school educator turned homeschool mom of 11 years now. So we have been doing this for quite a while. I have been sharing my journey for the past few years on my website, nurturingconnectionshomeschool.com, where I share encouragement, resources, and planners to help you connect with what matters most. Now, if you go over there, I do have a member freebie section, which includes some free printables that I've created along the way for my children, for our home. And so I share quite a bit over there. If you wanna go check it out, it is absolutely free. It just takes an email address um, to get started and just get access to what I've created. It's my way of putting it um, out there for you guys. Now today, what we're going to be talking about is a little bit on weekly planning with the new Home Plus School Planner that I have put together, along with some tips for putting your homeschool on autopilot. So we'll go ahead and start there for just a bit because I know some of you are just getting started. You may have little ones in the mix and so just wanted to give you some tips and things you can do to keep those homeschool days moving forward with a system that will be easy to maintain and help you accomplish the goals that you have for your homeschool. Now, in the past video, I talked a lot about how to establish yearly goals for your home and for your homeschool along with monthly goals. So today we're just looking at that, how to make it happen on a day-to-day -day basis. A few options you have in your homeschool is to keep things as simple as possible. Most of the homeschoolers I've talked to usually use something more like a routine versus a specific schedule. Depending on the season you're in, a schedule may be very, very difficult to maintain because life happens. If you have little ones, you cannot control when a diaper needs to be changed or when someone gets hurt or someone gets hungry. And so those are the things you'll need to be flexible about. You may start off with a specific time, and so you may aim to start every day by nine. That may or may not happen, but you can then just create a sequence of events that will hopefully keep you on track so that you are targeting those things that are of utmost importance. I have found when I don't have a plan in place, then things tend to get chaotic pretty quickly. Children thrive with routines. So as much as they might buck the system a little bit or complain or grumble here and there, they prefer those boundaries most of the time. Those boundaries give them security. Those boundaries give them a sense of um, comfort, knowing what's coming next and what to expect every day. So having something in place will really help your children to start learning how to be more responsible. It'll help them know what comes next. It will help them prepare for the day better and it'll help them fall into place so that they're accomplishing the things that they need to with their homeschool. And then it allows for more time for play, free play, imaginative play, all the other stuff that um, is so important for childhood, especially in those little years. As the kids get older, it also allows for that transition into more independent studies to take place more easily. They already understand the rhythm of life. They are already responsible with their morning routines, for example, and knowing what comes first, what comes next, and they're able to take care of their responsibilities responsibilities more easily because you've laid that foundation for them. So some ways to get that started is to organize your days on a handout that looks something like this. So this particular handout is a part of my bucket planning system, but I do have it in member freebie. So you can download this document if you find it helpful. And so what I do to kind of map out my weeks is I just put some times here. So eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, all the way down. Then the next step that I take is I block off anything that we'll be doing outside of the home. So if we have a co-op, for example, on a particular day, I will block off those hours that we are at co-op. If we have an extracurricular activity, I will block that off as well. 
I did find when the kids were little that we did more of our extracurricular activities during the day. We are in a place where there are a lot of homeschool opportunities. So gymnastics has a home homeschool class, dance had a homeschool class, um, or just a number of things that we wanted to do that offered homeschool classes during the day. So we took advantage of those. Usually those classes were a lot smaller in nature, so it was a lot nicer. We could get in and out pretty easily. And then we would just get back and continue with our day. Now that the children are older and we have a lot more to do and to cover in our homeschool days, I have found that it has worked out better to have those extracurriculars at the end of the day so that we don't touch our homeschool time. If we get out in the morning and we get back mid-afternoon, school is just not going to happen. It is so hard to get back on track in those older grades. So if you have little ones, it may still work out. You don't have a ton to do. You can usually finish in an hour or two. Um, and so it's a lot easier to kind of manage that along the way. But just some suggestions and tips that have worked for us. You'll just kind of map those out and then you'll just put a sequence of your school subjects or activities that you want to do with the kids. So for example, you might start off with a morning time and then you might have a snack and then you might go into reading and math and then lunch and then outdoor play or chores or quiet time. And so you just map those out. If you're using a specific curriculum and you see that you only have about 130 lessons in that curriculum or 140 lessons even, then you may just map out four days a week and take off Fridays or spread it out so that one of those days you just have reading and on the next one you just have math and so forth. So play with that a little bit, but once you plug everything in, then from there, you can choose to do something like activity cards. I used to call these agenda cards, but basically they just have the little subjects and they have just different activities such as screen time or a field trip or chores. Oh, there's a field trip one. Um, quiet time was on here, outdoor play. I have a number of these. These cards are free in my member freebie section as well. They're blank versions as well, but all of them have a little picture to help the little ones that aren't reading just yet, along with the specific activity you'll be doing. So some people have used activity cards on like a string that you could hang with clothespins and then you take one down throughout the day. I found it easier to laminate these and use those magnetic stick-on dots on the back. So we'd stick them on the refrigerator, I'd put them in the order that I had for that particular day, and then we would take down a card every time we did something. And so the children could see their progress. They really liked that, um, you know, seeing how they were doing, what comes next. They always knew what to expect. And so this was such an easy way to bring order and structure to our days, but was still flexible enough that we weren't tied down to a particular time or anything like that, we just went on with our day. So if something took an hour, great. If it took five minutes, whatever it was, we just kept moving forward as we went through the days. Now, as they got older, then I used something that looks like this. This is an agenda form. So this particular agenda form is a part of my bucket planning system, but it's just a simple table where I would write down the subjects for each day. So for example, that was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And so these were laminated, and this is what I used this past year with my second grader. So we would pull out Monday, we knew what to expect, and then we would just check it off with a dry erase marker. It was easy to keep track of, and just something we used throughout the year. As they got a little older, then I did use something more like this. This is also a freebie in um, my member freebie section. If you like this particular layout, they would write the date at the top with a dry erase marker. We would put general time frames here, but again, it was just about seeing your progress, tracking that progress throughout the day, and again, knowing what comes next and what to expect that particular day. So those are some ideas that really helped keep us on track. Now that my children are older, we do more of our group study time in the morning and then they go into their independent study. So they have student checklists that they do, a stu little student planner. Um, 
I do have those student planning sheets in my member freebies as well. That is absolutely free if you want to go check it out. Basically, I just record their specific subjects and activities or lessons that they need to take care of. And they already know that every day starts the same. We start off with morning routines. We go into group study one, group study two, and group study three. Each one of those blocks is 30 minutes. We'd usually start off with Bible, apologetics would be in there. Sometimes we would do hymn singing or scripture memory work. Then we would do a read aloud of some sort and some sort of history activity or lesson followed by science. So that was the general structure of our days. After that, we'd take a short break and then the kids would go to their independent studies. I'd work with my youngest and work my way up. We'd have lunch in there and when they were done, they were done for the day. So they could then do their chores. Chores had to be completed before screen time or play time or friend time. So school and chores got done and then they were free to do whatever they wanted. So with homeschooling, that meant there's plenty of time for all those extra projects they like to do. I have creators in my home, musicians that want to play music, make music, write things, create things. And so there was always plenty of time in the afternoons for that when we stuck to our schedule. When we didn't, when we started much, much later than nine o'clock or so, or we didn't follow our plan, I found that those particular days, we didn't have as much time for those fun things. We had more stress on those days. We were trying to get things done at six o'clock in the evening. And so for some families that may work, but for our family, it often led to a lot of stress that we did not really enjoy. So. We try to stay on track as much as possible. But that's just a general breakdown of my day. I do have a dry erase board where I would just write group study one, group study two, group study three, and then independent studies, I'd put each child's name and then I would just check that off as we went through the day. But again, we've done this so long that the kids know what to expect. They've been brought up in that structure and so it's something that they have just come to work through on their own. So. Hope that was helpful. Hope those tips are helpful. Now going into the home plus school planner part of everything, these are the forms that are available in the weekly layout section. So I've already discussed the yearly planning. I've already discussed the monthly goals and monthly planning. And I've also shared that some people may only need the monthly planning. When you put your homeschool on autopilot like this, when you know what every day is going to have, then you don't often need anything more than that. All you need to do is you wake up, you go down your list, then you look at your monthly plan and you might have any appointments that you might need to take care of or specific phone calls or bills that need to be paid and you just take care of those at the end of the day and that may be all you need. So keep that in mind. You may not need these forms at all, just depending on how busy your days are, how much you're trying to accomplish in those days. If you work from home, for example, if you have appointments that you need to take care of, or if you have learning differences or special needs that you need to tend to, then it may be more helpful to have something else in place to keep you on track with those goals. So this particular form is a one-page weekly spread. And so it's nice and simple and clean. I did put a daily section there for things that you want to be intentional about accomplishing every single day. So for example, I'm using this layout right now for summer. We're not doing as much throughout the summer, but there are specific goals that I have every day that I want to take care of. And so I jot, I jot those down there. Um, examples of things that go in my daily section will be Bible reading, for example, exercise. Um, I'm doing some rhythmic movements with the kids and I want to track our progress as well. I also put in writing because I am writing some curriculum for my daughter and just, again, tracking my progress there. There's a box here for things to buy because there's always something that needs to get purchased for homeschool or home. And as I see it, I just jot it down as quickly as possible before I forget it. So that goes there. Anything that I have in my weekly automations or my monthly goals that can be taken care of this week goes here. In my to-do list, unless it's a specific 
unless it needs to happen on a specific day, in which case I'll just plug it in on that particular day. So up here, I just put anything out of the ordinary. If it's an appointment, for example, if it's a phone call I have to make, if it's something that I can take care of on that day, I'll plug those in here. Down here, I'll plug in anything I do in the evenings when I have my computer time or meals sometimes go in here. And then there are just some extra boxes for any other notes that I need to take. So usually that's my budgeting that I keep track there. Every um, week I take some time to reconcile everything, make sure everything's been accounted for. And then if I do make a phone call that week and I have to take a quick note, then I'll plug it into that other box. Now the way this is set up to print is on the back is a whole lined page there. So this is also another, pla another place where I can just jot down any notes or ideas or things that I have going on. Now the next layout is the actual inspiration behind this whole planner that I put together, which is a home plus school planner, which is this all-in-one planner that would help me track all of my home goals alongside my homeschool goals. I use this all of spring and absolutely love this layout. It always started off with this reflection page here. So I'd always write down my Bible verse for that particular week. I love to read my Bible every morning, and so I'd focus on one particular verse that I would read every single day that week or memorize. My must-dos went here for the week. So again, anything in my weekly automations would get popped in here. Anything for my monthly goals that I could take care of this particular week or anything else that has come up, I'll plug it in here. So for example, if I was on a phone call and they said, you need to follow up on this particular thing in next week, then I would just go to the following week and write it on must do. So it's out of my brain. I don't have to hold on to that mental clutter. It's in a place and it's gonna get taken care of when that time comes. This was my budgeting box. I always took the time to write out a prayer here and then things I wanted to be intentional about. So usually that was something like smile more, spend one-on-one -on -one time with this particular child, make sure you say encouraging words to your husband, things like that that were small things that could easily be missed in that day-to-day -day grind that I just wanted to make sure was at the forefront of my mind. Now after that, there was a three-page weekly spread. So you have Monday and Tuesday on this page, Wednesday and Thursday, followed by Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, which included gratitude, preparation, and an empty box there. So the way this layout worked was I'd always put in my schedule here. So I would put group one, group two, group three, and then each of my three children here. Any additional things that I had to take care of that day, I'd plug into to in the to-do list. And this was more for notes as needed. And then and next to that, I had my lessons. So these are my lesson boxes. So I plugged in the things I would read or do for group one, group two, group three. And then I put each of my children here and would just write down the lesson numbers that they were working on that particular day. I really like tracking their progress. It helps to have it in here. I know they have it in their student checklist. And for a while there, I didn't write it down because I felt like I was doing double the work. But this really helps me stay on track. It helped me track the number of school days that we're doing. We took days off. I could note that. I could see that progress here. And so this, having it side by side, was so life-changing. It helped me stay on track. It helped me keep track of everything. If I had a lunch break and I could get on that call or make an appointment, I could jot it down immediately. Whereas before, I had two separate planners that just got jumbled around throughout the day. So... This was extremely helpful. Again, Fridays on the back and so forth. Saturday and Sunday are there as well. So this is the Home Plus School layout. There are four different color options for this, which kind of makes it fun because I like changing things up. The other format that I used at the beginning of last year was this one. So it has a very similar layout to start off with. You'll also note that at the top or even on the bottom of the other one, there's always a place to track how many school days we've done. So that's in there as well. Now this layout has five columns across the top and six going down here. So this could be done just for school, for example. And over here, 
There's five again and three going this way. So this could be morning, afternoon, and evening time if you chose to do the home plus the school part side by side like this. I've also used this in a sense where I would put our group studies here and then I would put each child here and then plug in their lessons each day of the week. Then at the bottom, those three boxes, I would use those for my home stuff that I needed to take care of that particular week. So a number of ways of using this particular layout. There's also a notes page on the back which keeps it very flexible and something that you can utilize based on your specific needs. But that's my second favorite layout there. And then the last layout I have in the Home Plus School Planner is again that similar reflection page followed by a horizontal spread. So there's five rows going down and then you have all those columns going across that can be used however you see fit. So those are just some ideas, some tips that help me along the way that um, help me stay on track, help me track our days. Now because we homeschool year round, it is so important that I track our days. I aim to do at least 170 days of homeschool days. I know we're always learning. I know there's so many growth opportunities all the time, but I do like to track those specific days where we target our curriculum goals and the activities that um, I have put in our schedule. So I use this perpetual um, calendar to keep track of it all. This is also a free download and it's also included in my bucket planner and my home plus school planners that matches the style of those particular planners. But basically I plug in six weeks, I mean six months and six months and then I choose a start date, I cross off all vacation days, and then I just circle as I go through the year. I also have an attendance record that looks like this. And I used to just put just kind of the X's on all the days that we did, but then there were times that I was like, oh goodness, did we do school on this day or that day? And I couldn't really remember. So then I just started plugging in the specific days. And then at the end of the month, I would just look how far we got. So for example, there it was 16 days that month, plug it in at the bottom, and then I could keep track of it as I went through. So these tools are available for you in my planners and as a freebie. I also have another video where I put how we homeschool your, or why we homeschool year round and how we do it that has a little bit more tips on that if you um, wanna go check it out as well. But other than that, that is what I use right now. I'm in the midst of planning out my curriculum choices, um, working through my student goal sheets, my home goal sheets, all of that, kind of working through the planner and kind of looking at that bigger picture. So it'll be interesting to see kind of what my needs are this year as far as which layout I choose. But if you are using the Home Plus School Planner, please let me know what's worked out for you. Um, what tips you have to share with others. I'd love to hear from you. Please drop your comments below. If this was helpful to you, please share it with a friend, like and subscribe on your way out, and I hope to see you here next time. Mm -hmm.